Hello YouTube, today I'll be presenting the setup details of my 4 feet aquascape including what equipment I use and how did I achieve the look with the stones. If you do not know which tank we are talking about, you can watch the video first. Do note that this example isn't supposed to be representative of the best possible planter tank setup but it reflects uh, me wor working within the limitations of the equipment I have and the cost that I am that I'm willing to spend on the tank. The tank on the left is at approximately 46 gallons and 3 feet in length while the tank on the right is approximately 65 gallons and 4 feet in length. The filter I'm using for the 4 feet tank is an Ehiam Pro 3. Um, the reason I'm using this is because I bought it at a good price second hand. The flow rate is not fantastic but I feel that it is adequate for the tank size. I use a local brand for the CO2 regulator and it feeds into an inline atomizer. Using an inline atomizer was a conscious choice. I have many in, uh, inline reactors lying around at home, but I believe that having strong mist in the tank makes plants grow better. You can check out the exact science of how and why CO2 mist works well in the CO2 video that I made. For the filter intakes for all my tanks, I like to use surface skimmers. This allows some aeration to take place and the aerated water goes directly into the filter chamber which is good for beneficial bacteria and also it keeps the surface spotlessly clean. Checking the surface schema for an accumulation of dead leaves also allows me to keep tabs on which plants are not doing well in the tank. I use glass lily pipes for my filter outflow as it gives a nice even distributed flow along with some surface agitation which is good for aeration of the tank. Plus they look nice. For both of these tanks, I use custom spectrum fixtures from BML. You can look at the LED selection below. And interestingly, the left LED is rated at 4600K and the right LED is rated at 3600K. Uh, so much so for the idea that low K rated bulbs cannot grow plants. For further explanation on this, you can watch my lighting basics video. Onto the hardscape proper. For the rock arrangement, I played with layouts by first stacking them on plastic grids. This is somewhat covered in the aquascaping video I made, if you want to know what I use. Um, the plastic grids allow me to play with the rock formation in the tank without committing to a certain layout. And once I found a layout that I liked, um, I would then add soil to the tank and build it up from there. I use a hybrid substrate rather than pure aqua soil to save costs. Right at the bottom is a layer of big clay chips. This prevents me from using an unnecessarily thick layer of dirt. The middle layer is just plain dirt. And for the top layer, I cap with aqua soil. Having a slightly thicker cap of aqua soil allows me to uproot plants without turning out too much of the dirt. This is the view of the substrate from the side. You can see that it is sloped and stacked higher towards the back. This is the view from the top. It looks oddly compressed because of the high slope. This is the view from the back. You can see that um, there's actually very little space behind the row of rocks. Having a steep slope allows us to construct more layers in the tank, which adds more depth. If I compare this tank to a tank that I aquascaped earlier in the year, uh, in that tank you can see maybe three layers, the foreground, the mid and the back. In this tank, because the slope is steeper, it allows me to construct more layers between the front and the back of the tank, which gives it greater depth and fills the tank entirely from bottom to top when viewed from the front. Often this means squeezing details into small spaces, um, shrinking the foreground for example. In this tank, the foreground is only about 1.5 inches, but even within that space, we can have a differentiation of layers by having a taller storage replants growing above the HC carpet, as well as having the red hydro as an accent. To give the tank dense layers, growth conditions must be good such that the plants grow well when even subjected to slightly overcrowded conditions. Good trimming technique allows us to grow dense bushes in small spaces. For these background bushes for example, the space uh, that is allocated for them to grow is only about 2 inches behind the stone ridge. This picture shows the growth timeline. From the first planted picture to the first picture at the top of the right column, it takes about 2 months. And another 2 months from the top picture at the right column to the bottommost picture at the right column. For this other tank, it took about 3 to 4 months from the top picture to the bottom picture. Lastly, these are some of the names of the plants used in this kit.
With that, I come to the end of my presentation and leave you with a short video of the Puffscape tank.